All right, guys, here we are for our third and... Moving on. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code it resolves 10 yp for 10% off your entire purchase. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to some more historic brawl gameplay. Before we jump into today's deck, yes it is Yarok, I'm very excited about that. Uh, just a quick reminder, if you are not already, please make sure you subscribe and like the video. If you do happen to enjoy these videos, it does mean a lot to us. Being a small time creator, any and all interaction really is helpful, so please do take the time to do that. It would mean a lot, and it's great to have everybody who's new here as part of our community. So welcome everybody, thank you so much for watching. But Today, we are talking Yarok. I have not tested this deck. We are This is Historic Brawl for the record. I know yesterday we were in just general Historic. Uh, but today, I thought we'd jump back into Brawl. Uh, and Yarok is one of my all-time favorite cards. I love this very, very much. 3-5 five for 5, uh, Salt Eye Colors, plus 2, Death Touch, Lifelink. If a permanent entering the battlefield causes an ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that triggers an additional time. So the idea is very simple, really. It's just to stack a bunch of ETB effects or uh, anything, really, that, that happens when something enters the battlefield. Uh, and the idea is that you double up on that and then hopefully get just tons and tons of extra value. So we do have some ramp elements to this to try and get there very quickly. We've got Lanoir Elf, Gilded Goose, uh, Lotus Cobra is in here. We've got Into the North, things like that that are going to hopefully help us get to uh, Yarok or some of our big bombs a lot quicker. Uh, but then the rest of the deck is essentially... You know, some interaction here and there, things like Tails End, but a lot of it is uh, just really important, really heavy hitting cards if we can get the Yarok down. So they're all good on their own, but the idea is that we can hopefully gain a lot of extra value by basically uh, doubling up on all these triggers. So hopefully we can get some cool stuff going. I have no idea. I haven't tested this at all. I have no idea what it's going to end up uh, looking like, but I think it will be a really, really fun deck. And so I definitely wanted to kind of give this one a shot. I'm not going to go into too much detail on everything because I think we'll kind of figure that out as we go along but this is going to be a learning experience for us haven't played it like I said so I just want to make sure that we're uh we're we're testing things out I should mention very quickly this version of this list is uh actually created by BP Radiant uh not myself so just as a quick heads up uh, but I really do, I, I like this version. There's a lot of them out there, but essentially they're all kind of built around the same uh, mechanic idea. So we're gonna give it a shot, guys. We're gonna spend 20, 30 minutes kind of running through some games. Hopefully we can get at least two or three in uh, and have a fun time doing it. So let's go ahead, guys. Let's jump into game one and see how it goes. And here we are, guys, against a Corvold deck, which is extraordinarily scary, actually. <laughs> um, do we keep this hand? I don't think so. Uh, I think we take the free mulligan. We don't have any ramp elements and really nothing that we can play. Let's go ahead. Let's take that mulligan now. Uh, this is a little bit better. It's obviously not ideal, but we do have Into the North as well as a few other things here. So I think this is worth a keep. Uh, we can Fable Passage turn one for a green source and then maybe hope that we can draw just an untapped source. And there we go. We found it. Uh, perfect. That is exactly what we need. Uh, so this is going to allow us to then go fetch up a blue source, which then just gives us all of our colors. So we're in hopefully good shape there. Uh, let's go ahead. We'll search up that green source. Uh, pardon the, the dog in the background if you hear a dog in the background. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and do this. Let's into the north. Uh, and we will pull. Wow, actually, we do have some options here. Uh, let's do this. We've got quite a lot of uh, green stuff in the deck, so I do want to make sure we get a lot of that out. Um, hopefully, Lou isn't too loud for you guys. Sorry. <laughs> All right, we do have to discard a card here. I think it's just Balagan, uh, the recovery here. Not super relevant for us. I mean, it's a very good card, don't get me wrong, but uh, I don't think we necessarily need it. So let's see what we want to do. Um, yeah, I think that's fine. Let's do this. Let's throw out Nissa. Nissa is a very solid card, obviously. Um, yeah, let's do it. We'll go here. 
we'll take the action and uh, we'll get a early attack in. It seems pretty good. Um, from your hand or graveyard. Okay. Worth, worth making sure that we read every little detail. Again, this is a learning experience for us, so I just want to do the best I can to to not mess up the plays, uh, but we will see. Oh, interesting. Very interesting. Okay. Uh, well, we've got some options, obviously. Um, they did leave one black source available to them, so we do need to make sure that we're playing this properly here. Uh, we've got a couple options. Um, I definitely think, uh, let's see. So we're going to end up playing this. We've got the Yarok. We've also got a Fierce Empath, though, which is quite good. Um, let's shoot for this. This may not be correct. I'm not 100% sure, but, uh, let's do this. Uh, we'll untap here. Uh, we'll take the action, I think. We'll attack in, see if they want to block. Looks like they don't, uh, which is perfectly fine by me. And now I'm just interested to see what they do. Scoot Swarm is a very frustrating card, but this does give us a little blocker for the Judith um, if they don't deal with it. Uh, and so I'm very, I'm just curious to see what happens here. Next turn, we can just drop Yarok and then Bajuka Bog, uh, which will trigger multiple different things, quite a lot, uh, in fact. Interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah, you got it. Fair enough. Um, that, I mean, yeah, that is a very annoying way to deal with it, but it does work. Um, I think we just take it. We don't actually need to trade off here or, or uh, sacrifice the 1-1. One, one. I think it's better to wait. All right. Let's drop Yarok. Let's drop the Bog. This is going to start uh, hopefully adding... Oh, yeah, this triggers twice. <laughs> Not super relevant, but that's fine. It does get uh, some stuff out of there, though. In particular, that Croxa is very scary if we don't get that out of there. So I'm glad we can do that. Are they good gaming us already? Uh, all right, Mayhem Devil, very good. Okay, so they may just not have very much, uh, which is kind of what it looks like here, um, and I'm very happy for that. Uh, all right, let's drop this. Oh no, that's not what I meant. Oh well, all right. Uh, we'll cycle that away, that's fine. Um, drop this. Let's drop this, actually, while we've got the Yarok on the field here. Uh, let's take the action. What do we want? Uh, we've got options. Let's see, how much mana do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, plus uh, Llanowar Elf. So technically seven, so what's the safest play? It might just be Agent. Um, Agent's very good with that uh, Judith on the field. Uh, let's see. We could also just take Masker Worm, but I don't like that very much. Um, I guess we'll take the Crater Hoof because if we do draw a land, um, we're in really good shape to just drop Crater Hoof and then like win on the spot. Truthfully, I should have just played that land. That was a bit of a mistake on my end. I actually meant to, but clicked a little too quickly. Surprise. We do that a lot here. Uh, all right. They have got a Varaska. That's a little scary. They could take out the Llanowar Elf, um, which would certainly set us back a turn in terms of... Uh, oh, okay. So this is going to deal one damage to any target. Uh, I assume they just start mowing down these Scoot Swarms. I mean, that seems like the best option, I would suggest. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's pretty solid. Um, they're just trying to get stuff off of the battlefield because they know we have Crater Hoof. I would suspect that the correct play would be to kill the Llanowar Elf, but that's just me. All right, let's drop land. It's going to trigger a couple things, uh, mostly just the Scoot Swarm twice, but that's good. Um, now we can just Agent for the Judith, uh, which seems pretty good. Uh, alternatively, we can Maelstrom Pulse. 
But actually, no, we definitely agent because we steal two things here. Why would we not do that? Um, we're going to steal you and you. I'm going to steal both of these. I think that's correct because this just seems really good. <laughs> okay, so they're going to destroy... Yeah, I would love to search my... This isn't great for them. Um, regardless, this isn't great for them because now it triggers Scoot Swarm even more. <laughs> and we still get all of the stuff. Um, we'll go ahead and destroy this. And we will attack. That seems pretty good. Uh, and we'll see what happens. I'm very curious. Uh, I mean, they could sweep, to be fair. And sweeping would be very good, but at the very least, we do still have the, the Vraska and just tons of mana. Um, with an Emergent Ultimatum, in fact. Alright, nice. Uh, cool, we did it. Guys, that's a win. Let's go ahead, guys. Let's move to game two. I'm liking Yarok so far, that's all I'm saying. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. Uh, and let's see what we want to do here. Um, I mean, I think this is a keep. It's a little bit of an odd one for sure, but uh, we've got a couple early plays, which is good. Winners, Battle of the Exile, Creature from Graveyard, if you... Okay, uh, so that's not going to be something that we necessarily want to play early, uh, but we do have the Sanctuary plus the uh, the Relic here um, that will be helpful. Uh... I think the play is this first. We don't have an untapped land, which is a little annoying, uh, but it is what it is. Um, that that relic is hopefully going to help us get to wherever we need to be. Uh, there's the fiddle bender. I have no idea. Sacrifice an artifact, search your library for an artifact. Yeah. Oh, very cool. All right. So tinker esque. Uh, that's actually quite scary, I would say, but we'll see. All right, uh, what do we want? What do we want? What do we want? I mean, I think it's definitely green. We need three green for just the stuff in our hand. So I think that that's probably correct. Let's go Cold Steel Heart here. Uh, and let's go... Uh, we'll go black just to double up on that. So now we've got double black and double green. We've got the Snarl in hand that we can uh, drop next turn. Or if we draw an untapped land... Obviously, we can do that, but then that allows us to start dropping some of these little enchantments here that will hopefully uh, set us up very, very well for future turns. Um, the uh, the Shaper Sanctuary is actually quite good because essentially it just means that anytime any of our stuff is targeted, uh, creature-wise at least, it just allows us to draw an extra card and hopefully get a little added value. Uh, which should draw us into more stuff to then be able to hopefully deal with whatever the opponent does. So very, very solid. Uh, also, quick heads up. I forgot to mention this at the beginning of the video. We do have a giveaway going on right now uh, for a Innistrad Midnight Hunt bundle that is ending on September 27th. I believe that's a Monday. Um, we're giving it away for free to one lucky subscriber slash... Oh, that's actually very good subscriber slash uh follower slash whatever we've got plenty of uh chances for you to do this if you would like to join in uh the way to do that is follow us basically everywhere that you can and you're good to go um we've got here on youtube you can subscribe to us uh we've got twitter we have got uh instagram twitch and uh the other one discord i couldn't think of it uh yes take action I'm going to go ahead and take the opportunity to get that uh, Foundry Inspector out of here. It takes away a target for them with this, so they can't keep chaining up. Um, and, I mean, they obviously can still, but um, <laughs> theoretically, it just kind of slows them down a little bit. I don't think it really did, obviously, but that's fine. Um, it just helped us uh, move forward a little here. Gaunty, huh? Uh, look at the top four cards to target player's library. Exile one of them, put the rest on the bottom. I mean, that's pretty good. Um, we do need to ramp here, though, a little bit. All right, so what do we need to do here? Um, hmm. I think what we're going to do... We're going to do this... 
does give us an extra mana, but I think we're just going to use this to play the Shaper Sanctuary. Um, and I actually will attack in. This actually allows us to mass Vandal if they had blocked, which they didn't, um, but that's fine. All right, they're just going to attack in. Interesting. I'm surprised they didn't keep chaining up here. Exile to one target over in that card. Ah, very cool. Oh, I like that a lot. That's a very cool uh, little play there. I like that. All right. Let's do this. Uh, I think we just go for the Yarok. Yarok seems quite good. Uh, we do have the Shaper Sanctuary here, so at the very least, it does mean if they try and kill Yarok, we'd get to draw a card, which is nice. Um, and we'll see what happens. Uh, I'm a little worried because, like, they can just keep tinkering up. Um, but that being said, it doesn't seem like they're interested in doing so, uh, which is interesting. Okay, yeah, now they do. Uh, so they're Mind Stoning out... Oh, what could they get? A Sky Scanner. I mean, that's cool. It's not that powerful. It's a 1-1 one, one Flyer, which is good. Oh, that's actually good. All right. Sure. This is a very cool little combo, this little two-card combo here. All right. Uh, now we can do quite a bit here. Um... All right, uh, how do we want to do this is the question. <laughs> uh, I think it's probably this because it sets us up so well for the next couple turns. Let's do this. This does happen twice. Wow, we missed. We whiffed. 100% whiffed. Uh, let's bazooka bog here. This just exiles their graveyard. It's not super relevant, but it could be. I mean, we don't know, right? So... It's worth it. And then we can just play a Gilded Goose here. Um, not super exciting, but we do get a couple food token out of it. Um, this has a crew of six, so we can safely attack in here. I'll actually attack in with the Sage as well. If they want to block it, that's fine. We gain a little life out of that exchange, so that's definitely worth it. They are most likely going to try and uh, get to a point where they can activate this Plow and start gaining some of this life back. Um, Wow, okay. They tore down the Solemn. I guess they can just draw cards with the Sky Scanner, so that makes sense. Interesting. This is an interesting deck. I feel like it's a very cool idea, but I feel like I... Oh, okay. I would have expected them to have had more powerful things, is all I would say. Uh, on top of your library. What do we want on top of our deck here? Um... Rex Age is pretty good. Uh, what is this? Mm. I'm just gonna get Rex Age. We'll see what happens. Um, they destroyed their own creature here. That's kind of interesting. The Rex Age gets rid of this plow, uh, or this. I mean, either one is pretty good. All right. Oh, very cool. All right. Uh, yeah, we're definitely getting this circle out of here because that's annoying as heck. Um, do we have... We don't have enough to do both. Uh, let's see. Uh, if we do this, do we have enough to do both? We do. Um, so maybe that's worth it. Or we do this. Yeah, let's do Guardian Project first. Then we'll Rex Sage um, and blow up this stupid circle. <laughs> uh, but this allows us to also draw a card, which is kind of nice. We kind of have a free turn here because they're not really doing that much, so I'm going to take the opportunity. Um, I'm going to play this as a land for sure. We do want to get as many lands as possible out because we do have Gonti, um, and so being able to uh, basically play Gonti and then maybe immediately play something or play Yarok plus something is quite good. Um, 
I'm not going to block. It's a 1-1. One, one. They do gain some life, and if they want to draw a card, they can. But, I mean, that was going to happen regardless. So there's not much we can do there. Very curious to see who ends up winning this game, because this is an interesting one. All right, there's the Fiddlebender. Banishing Lights. Taking out Guardian Project? Sure. Uh, we can actually just deal with that, which is kind of nice. Um, all right, so what do we want to do? Uh, let's do this. Do this. Uh, we'll exile you. It gives us the Guardian Project back, which I think is worth it. Let's Gaunty. Really want to land off of the top here, to be honest. Um, <laughs> yeah, I want that. Um, okay, interesting. Um, I'll attack. I mean, it's not a big reason not to here. All right, let's see what they do. Uh, very interesting game here, actually. This is a really cool deck. We've been okay because we've had Rex Ages, but like, this is not an easy one to to make work. Let's just say that. Uh, Scoot Swarm plus Elvish Rejuvenator is quite good. Scoot Swarm can really quickly take over a game in uh, Historic Brawl. I like that a lot. Prophet of the Peak. Again, a cool card, but I feel like they could be doing more. Um, maybe I'm wrong. This does just eventually win the game, so this gives us inevitability, which is why I picked this up, by the way. Uh, and it just slows them down in general. Uh, the question is, do we just want to go ahead and gain a couple life here? And I think we do. There's not a reason we don't need to do this. Um, we don't have anything that we're going to do with it, so I'll go ahead and gain some life. We don't have another, like, we can't do, obviously, another Gilded Goose, and we did already exile it, so I'm not stressed about that. Uh, this is very powerful ish but it's not i mean it's not the uh end of the world here so we do have some decisions to make this coming turn though do we just drop yarok and pass uh which is not a bad way to go oh we have hostage taker <laughs> uh interesting very interesting. Okay, so we're setting up for like a big Yarok turn, I feel like here. Um, and with that in mind, I do think we kind of just need to play Yarok. This might die like immediately, but they we've gotten rid of their Banishing Lights. Um, I don't know what else they might have, but this is going to draw us two cards, which is helpful. If we draw two lands, we definitely drop one. We might save if we only draw one. Oh, or we're just going to win. Be lucky, guys. Be lucky. Uh, all right, we did it. Uh, let's 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 shoot for one more game. It's still. I mean, we got. We're at like twenty four minutes. We got time. Let's jump into one final game. Let's see how it goes, guys. All right, guys. Here we are for our third and moving on. All right, now here we are for our final game. <laughs> that was weird. Um, do we like this hand? I don't really like this hand, although we are against goblins, so we know that Blood on the Snow is going to be potentially good. But this has a lot of heavy hitters. I think we mulligan this, uh, as sad as that is. Oh, this is quite bad as well. Um, we have no green mana. That's kind of the bad part about this. I think we have to mulligan one more time. Um, and this has lands, so I guess we keep... <laughs> um, I think we throw the witness back. I could see it going either way, but I think we throw that back. Uh, we're gonna lead with the mirror lake, I believe. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, hello, friend, Mr. Clean. We're against Mr. Clean, guys. It's a celebrity. Um, I'm curious to see how goblins works in uh, the the meta here. Uh, this is nice. It does give us a little ramp. I'll take it. Um, I'm keeping the casualties of war, by the way, in the opening hand, because if we do get this, we can target out their Krinko or something like that. Um, so we'll see if that actually pans out, but that's the hope. Uh, chances are they do attack in here. They just have a lot of haste givers, which is scary. Uh, makes sense. 
It's a Krinko deck. Alright, tap to land. Uh, but a land nonetheless. I will take it. Uh, I think we just play the eye. Alright. A Tail's End. Interesting. Um, to be clear, Tail's End is very, very good because it does always hit the, uh, the guys. Um, Alright. Unfortunately, we can't do anything about it right this second, but that's fine. Create the Gobbos. Yep. Uh, we're going to decline. Oh. Well, that's helpful. Um, all right. Uh, hmm. I mean, the correct, easy correct play is just to blow this up right away. The less potentially correct play is to play Yarok and then try and blow it up. I think we just try and blow it up. And then just make them replay it. Uh, this also does get us a land next turn, which is helpful with the casualties of war. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take it. That's not the the most efficient play, I'm sure. Or it's it's the safe play. It's not the the like most high end play. Um, it'd be great if we had had an untapped land, like an untapped blue source here that we could then tails end this back on the way down. But didn't work out. That's super scary. Uh, yeah. Thankfully, though, they're giving us targets for the uh, casualties of war here. So, I mean, I'll take it. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we do need one more untapped source to be able to the casualties of war, which I do think we take the opportunity if we can. We've got the we're only going to hit three things, I suppose, but it's worth it. We get them off of a land. We get them off of the arcane signet. They clearly don't have a land in hand. Um, Give me an untapped source. Ugh, that's not an untapped source. Um, I was hoping. Was hoping, was hoping. Uh, let's go Zagoth Trium. Let's get that out. We do kind of just want to leave up Tail's End here, I feel like. Um, I feel like that's really important. Uh, would you all agree? I mean, what could they possibly do? I guess they can drop that. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're just going to leave up Tails End. That's the safest play. They have to be wondering why we didn't play Yarok, though. <laughs> like, that has to be very clear to them. Um, but it is what it is. All right, they're going for the safe play. I like it. Uh... Uh, yeah. That's scary. That's a lot of damage, but we'll see. Wow, they're just attacking with everything. Okay, aggressive. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That is a lot of damage. Um, alright, so I think what we're gonna do is take out one of these guys. 3, 4, 5, 6. We still have 6, so... But I don't feel super confident. We really need a sweeper. <laughs> Decline. Instead, we got Risen Reef. Heck yes. All right. Not ideal. Uh, chances are we're just dead, right? Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Not technically, but if they just have any real play, then yes. <laughs> All right. Artifact, creature, land. It's the only thing we really can do here. Um, so we're going to take it. Tap for the red, that makes sense. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if they just have a land, they win, really. Um, because all they gotta do is give something give Krinko haste, and then they're good to go. Alright, we're at one. <laughs> uh what a game. What an interesting game. Okay, uh. I mean, we're just dead. <laughs> like, there's no way around it. This gains us some life, but it's not enough. Uh... Oh, very cool. Yeah, I mean, we're just dead. We were very close to not being dead, but we're dead. We gained three. 
Oh, that feels so bad. We lost a Gabos. All right. Uh, well, guys, let's chat about this list. All right. So what do we think of Yarok? I love it. I love Yarok. I think the card is, has always been really good. We've already, I mean, we've seen since it's been in, uh, in standard rotation, we've seen it do a lot of really cool things and it, it's no different in historic brawl. I think it's very powerful. Oh, excuse me. Um, that being said, obviously it did have some some struggles against goblins uh i think part of that we might could have played a little cleaner uh to be honest that being said i don't know that it would have really mattered i think we probably would have lost regardless what we needed was a sweeper and we just didn't get it um and that's okay i mean it happens uh we're not gonna always win so that that's okay uh a maelstrom pulse would have been kind of nice too because then we could have blown up uh all the goblin tokens and then allowed ourselves that tails end to, to counter something on the way down or a triggered ability or whatever. So regardless, it was fun. It is a really solid deck. It is a very interesting list in that I think there's potentially more decision making than you would normally have. Uh, I, I mean, Historic Brawl is always going to be filled with a lot of decisions, but I do think that this one in particular has a lot of decision making that you do have to be very conscious of uh, and and try and at least do, do the right thing, uh, whether or not you succeed. Is okay we didn't all the time uh but regardless we got some good wins uh some silly games it was a really fun time i hope you guys enjoyed this one thank you guys again for watching i really do appreciate it please i'm, I'm reminding you subscribe like the video if you enjoyed it it does make a lot of difference for us uh so please do take the time to do that it would mean the world to us have a great day guys thank you so much Good luck on the giveaway, uh, and hopefully we might have some gameplay later today. I'll, I'll keep you guys posted, but uh, check it out, subscribe, and you'll know. That's all I'm saying, you'll know. But thanks a lot, guys. I'll see you again very soon.